Sí. Hey guys, I'm back here. I'm I'm planning on upgrading my Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition JAMA board up to I'm thinking the Hyper Fighting, the Turbo one. I ordered some replacement EPROMs so I could burn a completely separate copy of the, the three ROMs you have to replace and then just swap them out whenever I felt that I needed to. But the ones that I ordered are taking a really long time to get here. So I decided that I'm just going to go ahead and take off the official EPROMs that I've got, erase them since I have the eraser, and then burn the, the hyper fighting <clears throat> image onto those ROMs. And I figure it's no big deal because I can always uh, flash the data back if I need to. I'm also going to try and verify the data that's on there and see if they match up with what MAME has before I do any erasing. So I figured I would go ahead and show what it looks like when you uh, do this process. <clears throat> so first things first, this is the Champion uh, Street Fighter 2 board. This is a Champion Edition one. I think the World Warrior one looks the exact same. This, I'm not sure what this board's for other than it's got the kick harness plugs in right here. It, I've already popped this out because it, it can take a little while to, to unplug because it's, it's in there pretty tight, but there's just a, it looks kind of like an IDE connector uh, for a, a, a computer hard drive, but I went ahead and popped that off because the three ROMs you have to replace are these three right here. And if you've got this on there, it covers up, uh, comes, down to around right there. So here are the, the three ROMs. I've never done this before, so I just figured I'd document it in case I mess up so everybody else can see it. Um, what the instructions I found said uh, was to use a screwdriver to pop the these chips off, and you've got to do it you know, both sides a little bit at a time, and eventually it'll come out. So I was going to use this really big screwdriver, I already kind of wedged it under there, and I'm not sure if that's really what I want to do. So I'm going to use this smaller one because it can really get up underneath there and I can twist it and kind of make it come up a little bit slower. So we'll, we'll see what happens here. Alright, so that side's coming out. flip the board around. And that one's starting to come out. like one side came out but the oh there it goes okay so I have my I don't know if you can see that the 21 a ROM popped out that's what it looks like and so if you look on the motherboard here it actually has it marked there's 20 which is blank and 21 and then this one is 22 and 23 so I'm guessing there's probably a 22 and a 23 underneath there and that just plugs in like that. So I'm going to have to pop all three of those off, or the other two off anyway. And this little sticker uh, will peel off here and reveal a window. So that's where all the data is stored. And so I'm just going to set that right, well, I'll set it like that. That way I know the direction that it needs to go back in. So anyway, whenever this this window is exposed to, I guess it's ultraviolet light, for an extended period of time, say 30 minutes, it should erase all the data that's on here. But I'm going to read this. Just exposing it like that's not going to hurt it. So I'm going to, but I'm going to go ahead and cover it up, and then I'm going to put that in my EPROM reader, which I got in the mail, I guess last week, and read the data and we'll see what the 
what, what that says. Okay, so I've got all three of those chips out right now and I'm about to put them in my EPROM burner slash reader to see if the CRCs or the checksums match up with what MAME has uh, in, in their driver list. So I'm going to take that, that 21, 21A, that's the first one we're going to check. So in the software, we've got to first go to device, go to the device list, and <clears throat> I don't know if you can see it, no you can't, but this chip is made by a company called ST, it's got their logo on it, and it's an M27C4002. So I'm going to type ST, so we got ST right there. And then over here, type M27-4000, well, C, M27-C4002, so it's right there. So we hit select, and so now if I look over here, normally it's going to show a picture of the ROM that's going to be burned, but this says adapter needed. <clears throat> so I've got this adapter right here. This adapter lets you read 16-bit ROMs, which I guess this burner can't do by itself. And if you can't see this, but right here it actually has a list of the, the ROM types that fit in here. And the 27C4002 is actually the last one on that list right there. So I'm going to plug this in. It all, you always have to line it up on the very bottom. Sometimes there'll be an open couple open at the top, but you know that's that's normal and it goes in this way so I know you probably can't see that too well but push that down okay so this thing is locked in place and the very top few pins are left open now I'm going to take this ROM here, and on this picture, it's got a little notch showing on the top of the little picture of the ROM. So if we look at the ROM here, it's got a little notch on the top of that, so that means it goes up. So we always line it up right here and make sure the notch is up here. So I'm going to lock that into place. Okay, so that's locked in. Now we'll come over here, and I've got it set, well, it defaults to, to write and verify. I'm just going to tell it to read, um, then we click the read button over here, or you click it up here, it doesn't matter, it's two spots. So it's going to read the ROM, it says reading M27C4002, and the CRC on this is A1F1, that's the last four. So if I come down here to the CRC list, uh, it doesn't match up. So, I'm going to read it one more time. And it's getting the same checksum, so at least it's getting the same thing over and over. So I'm going to go ahead and save a copy of this ROM in case I need to, to put it back on that chip. So let's go to File, Save As, and I've made a folder here for Champion Edition ROMs. So we'll just call this 21A. K, which is good. And so we just repeat this process for the next two ROMs. Okay, so I've got all three of those ROMs copied right now, and what I'm going to do just to make sure that those are actually okay and there's not something bad going on since the checksum's not matching up, I went ahead and put those ROMs in a zip file for MAME. So I'm going to try to launch MAME and make sure that it, that it loads here. So, so that's pretty awesome. All right, back again. And I've got the windows exposed on all of these ROMs. These, the uh, 
21 and 22, they're the same ROM type. 23 is a different type, it's a different brand. It's made by Mitsubishi and the window looks different as well. But, uh, and so when I, had to when I copied that one over, I actually had to change the device type again. So anyway, we'll go over to the Eprom Eraser and we'll set it to, I guess, 40, 40 minutes. Go make dinner and come back. And we'll set the ROMs in here. in there and I hit the on switch and the light comes on and now we bake them and so after about 40 minutes those should be erased and we'll come back and see what happens next so the ROMs are erased now so they should be anyway so I'll take those out So right now the device that I've got set in the programmer software is for that Mitsubishi chip, which is this one, ROM number 23. And so we'll go ahead and burn that one first. Okay. I'll read it. if there's anything on it or not, but Let's see what happens if we do erase. Erase function failed. Okay. Or chip doesn't need erase. Alright, so I'm going to set this to read and then verify. Come over here. which I already extracted earlier. And this is number 23. <coughs> so I'll just leave all these default. I have no idea what that is. And go right. So it is writing the ROM right now. Almost done writing now. And it's verifying, which that goes really quick. And it says it's okay. So now I just need to repeat this process for the next two chips, plug them back in, and pray that it works. So everything is assembled now, and here's the moment of truth. like it's working. No sound, but it's turbo. Oh, have it turned down, I guess. Awesome.